What does it mean to be a pioneer? Now you might want to ask Bobby Mitchell, the first African history of the NFL's Washington Redskins, an Arkansas native who forged his path collegiately in the Big Ten at the University of Illinois. In part one of his story, Mitchell takes our Howard Griffith through his journey to Champaign as he was one of many youngsters who migrated north for a chance to learn and play. I wanted to go to the University of Arkansas. The answer was no. That's their loss. The 1955 edition of the Fighting Illini. The Razorbacks' loss was the University of Illinois' gain. Bobby Mitchell arrived in Champaign with a football scholarship in the mid-1950s, leaving behind his home state, where segregation prevented him from attending the University of Arkansas. A few days before high school graduation, I had no scholarship, no way I'd be going off to school. And yet a few days later, I got a scholarship. And a few weeks later, I'm on a train heading to Champaign, Illinois. Illinois. <laughs> I had never been coached by a white coach, but there was no fear to take the chance. While Mitchell was on scholarship for football, another sport held his interest. My man was on, on the track, trying to make the track team, and to get a chance to play, and then all of a sudden, it all opened up. Uh, found out that I could run the football. <laughs> Bob Mitchell, a substitute sophomore halfback, plays the major role in toppling Michigan to its first defeat. Uh, my roommate, Harry Jefferson, was a starting halfback. And he was in front of me, and uh, when he got his shoulder hurt against Michigan, who was the number one team in the country, mm -hmm. and they came to Illinois for that game, and I had to go in, and I immediately beat him. And went on, it was all Big Ten and everything over the next five games. Here's Mitchell again, this time against Wisconsin. In 1955, Bobby Mitchell averaged 8.3 yards per carry in his first football season as a sophomore after he and another future star sat out their first year due to NCAA rules that made freshmen ineligible. When Ray Nisky and I got to Illinois as freshmen, he was an all-American quarterback. So we had a lot of fun as freshmen beating up on the boss at that. <laughs> so when our sophomore year came around and we started playing, uh, Ray Elliott, our head coach, told Ray Nisky he couldn't use him as quarterback because he couldn't remember the play. No. <laughs> and Ray just cried. <laughs> but the crazy thing about it, they put him at fullback. And he goes on to Green Bay and been one of the greatest linebackers of all time. Hall of Fame, the whole works. Similar to Ray Nitschke, Mitchell was enjoying success professionally. He was in his third season with the Cleveland Browns, part of the same backfield with Hall of Famer Jim Brown, when another unit requested his services the U.S. Army. This is my third year. And here Jim and I are top runners in the league. And the phone rang. PFC Mitchell. I said, oh, shoot, I forgot. I, I got out of ROTC. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, this is who's Lieutenant Simmer or someone. And just wanted you to know that uh, there'll be a couple of gentlemen at your door shortly. Uh, you, uh, you've just been called up to the Army. I'll caution you, uh, all over the country this is happening, and it was. Mm. Was the Berlin crisis and all that. You must report immediately as your orders state. Mitchell gained permission to play football on the weekends, as long as he fulfilled his military obligations during the week. But his fourth season with the Cleveland Browns would be his last. Unbeknownst to me, my name was in the harbor involved in a trade with the Washington Redskins. Mm. So by being in the service, I didn't know this. I wasn't reading things. They said it was in the paper. Some stuff was whispering in the papers in Cleveland. Right. But apparently Paul Brown had made his decision to get Ernie Davis. I don't know if you heard him say. Oh, yes. Ernie Davis from Syracuse, the next Jim Brown. 
Mitchell's trade to Washington made history as he became the first black player for the franchise in 1962, making the Redskins the final NFL team to integrate, despite the wishes of their owner. George Preston Marshall, who had said he would never put a black on his football team, and he had none. But the Kennedys and Congressmen on the Hill uh, had said that if he's going to play football at the D.C. Stadium, which was owned by the city and not him, he'd have to have blacks on his football team. And that's why he made the deal with Paul Brown to get me. In seven seasons with Washington, Mitchell led the NFL twice in receiving yards, finishing with 91 career touchdowns and over 14,000 all-purpose yards. He went on to spend nearly three decades in different capacities in the Redskins' front office. I got a million stories. But the, the main story is that I made it. You never know what's going to happen to you because I've had a good life. I've never been defeated in my head. <laughs> <laughs>